following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making their way to the ring. Live from the AfterBuzz TV studios, it's making their way to the ring with Lillian Garcia. La 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 la, hello everybody. Welcome to Making Their Way to the Ring. I am Lillian Garcia. So excited to have you guys with me here today. You can catch me at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter. Official fan page for Facebook is Lillian Garcia official fan page. Also LillianGarcia.com where you can catch all the information on how to get the podcast. Everything is there. We are on AfterBuzz TV. It's YouTube.com slash AfterBuzz TV and also on iTunes. You know, people have asked me how to find us exactly and there's actually an app on iTunes. It's probably already built into your phone. Right? It is on mine and um, it's it's the podcast app. All you got to do is hit that, put my name in there, or you can put making their way to the ring. Boom. Voila. It shows up. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you also put comments on YouTube. Give us five stars, please. I always do this. I always hold up my hands as 10. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but anyway, five stars. Um, and that really does help out the show. So really appreciate it. All right. So we've got a big show for you. And one of the things is, is I've always wanted to be in two places at one time. And what I mean is, if you've seen my Twitter feed, I'm actually in Spain right now. That's right. I'm in Madrid. That's where I grew up. Uh, eight years of my life, my dad was working for the United States Embassy there. And so we've decided, my sister, my cousin, and I have decided to take my mom there. Uh, we are going to have a blast, I know. And like I said, we're in two places at one time. All right, so obviously, I have pre-recorded this. And so did I with Sasha Banks' interview. And the reason why is because I was invited by WWE to come backstage and interview um, some of their uh, superstars, which, as you saw last week, I had AJ Styles, which was awesome. And then um, today, as you guys know, I have Sasha Banks. Now, we were at Staples Center, and Staples Center, unfortunately, does not al allow outside cameras. So we had to do an audio only. So that's why you will see just a photo of Sasha um, as we're doing the interview. It was very, very compelling. So um, you know what, without further ado, let's go ahead and go into it. She's incredible. She's been through a tremendous journey and she shares a lot today and also makes breaking news. So ladies and gentlemen, here is a look at the one and only, the boss, Sasha Banks. The boss, Sasha Banks, is a WWE superstar who made her childhood dream come true. Born in Fairfield, California to a family who moved around a lot, she considers Boston to be home. That's where, at the age of 16, Sasha began training to wrestle. She loved Eddie Guerrero going up and had always wanted to step into the ring herself. Sasha made her debut in 2010 and a year later became the chaotic women's wrestling champion. Her record title reign came to an end when Sasha signed with WWE in August of 2012. Becoming part of the women's wrestling revolution, Sasha and her fellow NXT superstars, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Bayley were known as the Four Horsewomen. Sasha competed in the very first women's Iron Man match and was the NXT Women's Champion. The Boss made her WWE main roster debut in July of 2015. She joined Team Bad and was immediately popular with the WWE Universe. After making a memorable WrestleMania entrance with real-life cousin Snoop Dogg, Sasha was drafted to the brand Raw in 2016. She is currently a three-time Raw Women's Champion. It's about to get real, raw, and inspiring with the boss, Sasha Banks. And there you have it. Guys, can you believe what an incredible career this woman has had? <laughs> I am so happy to have her right now. We are at Raw. We are backstage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so without further ado, <laughs> Sasha Banks is in the house. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, this is great. Yeah, this I'm is so great. excited. I'm, I'm going from 
being your friend in the locker room yep. to actually getting to interview you in a, in a way that I'm going to get to know you more. Yeah. And that's what excites me is that because the fascinating stories that I'm hearing on the show um, and getting to know everybody and, and the fascinating, you know, the, the, the stories of such struggles and then coming to hear and then seeing the success. Yeah. Um, it's funny though because I've always hailed you from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> always thought you were from Boston, Oopsie. and then I find out you're a Cali girl. Uh, I was born in Fairfield, California, but um, we moved a lot when I was younger because I have a brother with autism, and we were just trying to find the right schools and the right doctors. And you know, from after from California, we moved to Iowa, and that's where my mom's from. So we were thinking. Maybe her family can help us with money and this and that, and Iowa was terrible. So we moved to Oregon, which is where my birth dad was, see if he can help us with money. Terrible. We went back to California, then we went back to Minnesota, and then from there, it was just a, a long win of living there for four years, and then finally, um, my mom got a job in Boston, and I moved there when I was 17, and I call Boston home is because that's really where I found myself. That's where I started training, and you know, that was my, my dream since I was 10, to be in the WWE. So to me, finding a wrestling school and, and just knowing like, wow, I'm just really beginning my journey of what mm -hmm. I wanted to do since forever. And wrestling is the only thing that I've ever loved. The, the moment I laid my eyes on wrestling, I knew that was what my calling was. What, when was that moment? Um, I remember I was living in Iowa at the time and there was nothing on TV. We had no cable and SmackDown came on and it was legit maybe at midnight. And I was like, what is this, you know? Um, then I remember my mom coming in, she's like, what are you doing? What are you watching? God wouldn't like this stuff, turn that off. And I was like, okay. So I turned it off. I ran into my brother's room and I turned it back on and I just continued watching it. And I was like, wow, it just was instantly hooked. And ever since that very moment, I watched wrestling every single week. I had. Legit, I would, I would skip, <laughs> you know, so many friends' parties, sleepovers. I even missed my grandpa's funeral. I, I said that on podcasts, and people were like, what the? <laughs> Just so I can watch wrestling. I missed Thanksgiving going to my grandma's house because I wanted to stay home and watch wrestling because I knew that I wouldn't be allowed to watch it at her place. Yeah. And, um, it was, for me, growing up was really difficult having a brother with autism. It was ugh, such a struggle, but having that two hours of just having wrestling was just... That, I always felt like that was just my time. Your the escape. only time I was, yeah, my escape, pretty yeah. much. And who in that time did you watch that, was there any particular person? It was Eddie Guerrero. Eddie. Eddie. The moment oh I God. saw Eddie, and it's so crazy, like, just instantly. I, I saw him, I'm like, oh my God, I love this guy. Like, yeah. his charisma, his, his everything. I just, I loved watching him, you know? The stars back then were like The Rock, Brock Lesnar, like, I wasn't hooked to them. It was Eddie Guerrero, and you know he was exactly who I wanted to be. Wow, well, I don't know if you know. I mean, obviously you know that I got to work with him because yes. I've been here so long. But I don't know if you know that I actually wrote a song about him. You did, and oh I, my gosh. I I released it on his 10 year anniversary oh. of him passing. Yeah, it's called Live On. Oh my gosh! And it really because I got to see this man who fought so hard, right, to get to where he was at, and then having to um, handle and deal with his demons yeah. that he spoke about. And then he yeah. actually got to get cleaned and, yeah. and you know, pass that in a way. Um, and then, then he passed away. Yeah. But everyone, the one thing that I remembered, as, and, and I kind of, I, uh, if you guys want to hear it, it's on, it's on YouTube. It's, like I said, it's called Live On. And it's one of those things that when people would watch him perform or, you know, even now, it still lives on. Yeah. People still talk about Eddie. Yeah. What was it specifically about him? You know, people always ask me that, and I, I honestly don't know what that one thing is because it's the same thing for wrestling. I don't know what that one thing is that makes me just love it so much, but it just makes my heart just, it's just so happy. Like, Eddie, to me, was just... It's hard to explain because, you know, it's not like I, I knew him or knew his personal life when I first watched him, but, you know, after school, I would run to the library and look him up and, like, want to know everything about him. And just knowing that he did struggle and he lived in a hotel. And, you know, I was living at a hotel for three years. And that was really hard for me, like, in Minnesota, um, living in a hotel and trying to go to school. And uh, I hate crying. <laughs> it's okay. Kids would make fun of me, you know. Okay, and I would yeah. ask the bus driver to 
drop me off somewhere else so they didn't see me walk to a hotel room. You know, I couldn't give out my phone number because they would call the hotel and they'd be like, why are you living in a hotel? Like, my mom didn't have a job at the time. She was dealing with my brother, we, we had nothing. So for me, it was just like seeing his struggles and then just seeing his come up things, you know? He went through addiction, he, he got clean and you know, here he was and when he won that, that championship, I remember just bursting into tears and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? So um, I honestly can't tell you what that one thing is. Let's talk about that. Like you say that you had such a hard time. I, so obviously your mom was a single mom. Yes. When did your father, like when did that whole thing happen with your father um, and your mom split up? I remember them just not being together since I was two. And uh, he would be around here and there, but uh, you know, he was abusive to my mom. Um, I always remember like the police coming to our house when I was really young and just always being scared of him. And um, for me, the most difficult part is when we, when my mom told me that we were gonna move to Oregon to be around him for him to help us. And at that time I was 11 or 12 and I'm like, help us? He's never helped us before, why are we going there now? Because, you know, he is my Snoop Dogg's uncle, so he has money mm. and he has his own restaurant and he has a, a record label and he does music on the side, so he has money. Yeah. But he's never helped. He's never paid one thing of child support, anything. And um, I just remember being 11 years old and we drove <laughs> from Iowa to Oregon and with my brother. And at the time, he was a Tasmanian devil. You, he couldn't be by himself. He would hit you, pull your hair, like just a, a, a devil. Yeah. Like, he would hit me all the time. And it was so hard just driving across country trying to get to Oregon for this man who's never helped us to try to get help from him. And um, I just remember living there and I was so miserable and I was so depressed and I was just like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? And finally my mom's like, he's not helping us. So we packed our stuff, we left and we went to California and we, we lived with my uh, godmother for a little bit until my mom could try to figure out where we need to go next. And mm -hmm. the next place was Minnesota because there was a great um, autism program for my brother. And we moved there. And it's just a struggle for my brother again. In Iowa, my brother got abused in school. Mm. And um, when we went to Minnesota, he got abused in school again. And my mom didn't have a job. She, had, she didn't have a job for seven years. and. Uh, I was having problems with school with kids making fun of me, this and that. And my, final, my mom finally got a, chimp, a, a temp job and we were living in a, a hotel at a time. So think about it. Yeah. Three people right. in a small hotel room for three years. For three, for three years. years. We lived in a hotel room. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, we need to take my brother out of school because his behavior got worse because he was getting abused. His Obviously, teacher yeah. drove a little bug car, like a, a uh, what kind of car, like a bug? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Volkswagen. Yeah. yeah, so anytime my brother saw that car when we were driving anywhere, he would freak out and he would scream and he would have these, these fits. Wow. And when, every time he saw that car, he would just, he would lose it. And it would make me, like it would break my heart and it would break my mom's heart and we're, that's it. You know, yeah. we, we can't, we have to take him out of the school because enough's enough. This guy has been through so much and he already has autism and he already has to take as much medicine as he does every single day. Like, no. And mm -hmm. my mom finally got a job. So I'm like, you know what, mom? You go to work, I'm gonna leave school and I'm gonna take care of my brother. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 13, I, I left school. I started going to online school and I just started watching my brother from ever since then. Wow. Yeah. Girl, you had to grow up so fast. <laughs> so fast. I don't so know what a childhood fast. is. I don't. I never had uh, my teenage years. I never went to prom. I never really had a boyfriend. Like I, I knew nothing. So uh, that's why wrestling. You know, it's the yeah. only thing that saved me. I. I told my mom like, I'll do anything for this family. Just give me wrestling. Just give me wrestling. And do you understand that your mom was doing everything that she could? Like some of the choices that she made, maybe Absolutely. were Especially not. Growing up now, because for yeah. me, it was a struggle. I'm like, I feel like the second mom. I feel like the mom to my brother. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, sometimes I'd be really angry with her just with the decision she would make, whether she would buy something. And I'm just like, mom, we don't even have toilet paper. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have this. We don't have this kind of food. Like, 
why? Why? But now growing up, and I, I look back and, uh, you know, bless her, because I know it was hard for me, but I can't imagine how hard it was for her. Like, that's her son. Yeah. That's, she gave birth to him. Like, that's her baby. So just to know the struggle of that and, you know, the feeling that I have for my brother because I love him so much and he is my everything. Is he older or younger? He's younger. He's, he's younger? Yeah, okay. he's two years younger. Two years. And yeah. is it just the two of you? It is the two of us. Okay. Yeah. So what, do you, what did you learn from all of that? The biggest thing I feel like I learned from my brother, his name is Joshua, is just patience. Patience, 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 because people have no idea how hard it is to have anybody with a disability, any family member, mm -hmm. you have to be patient with them. Because we honestly don't know what they're going through, you know? Right. And uh, for me, I can't be loud or angry with him because he'll snap. I just had to take, always be calm with him and be like, Joshua, this, that, Joshua, this, this. And I was the only one that could ever calm him down. Mm. You know, yeah. I, was, I was legit, like, his right. best friend. So that's the number one thing I learned with him, and he has taught me so much, I feel like, about life, about living life, about being happy, and just, you know, thanking God every day for where we're at, because, man, my brother yeah. has been through so much, so much, in and out of the hospital, just such a struggle. But, you know, now that I look at him, and he's uh, he's 22 now, he'll be 25, or 23 on the 25th of February, so Aww, his birthday's coming great. up. Yeah. And just to see where he is now, like, from Joshua when he was a kid to Joshua now is night and day. He really? is an angel. Like, he, he is, he's everything. What helped? What made the... For me, I... Oh, it's so hard to say what helped. Sorry. But, um, I'm really religious, so I think praying helped a lot. But um, when I got signed to NXT, I don't want to cry again. It's okay. <laughs> um, I want you to be you. Okay. Real, so, girl. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it at when all. When I was 18, um, I, had a, I got a job at a shoe store, which was Oh, I legit. worked in a shoe store, too. <laughs> it was legit, like five minutes away from our, our yeah. apartment. And uh, my brother was good enough to stay at home by himself. But during every break, I would run home to make sure he's okay. My mom would run home to make sure he was okay. Legit, when we moved to Boston, he switched. Like, something happened, and he switched to being an angel. He can take care of himself. He can feed himself. He can do, like, so many independent things. And um, one day, I was just off from work, and um, I heard a weird noise. And just this, like, uh, uh, uh noise. And I was like, what the heck? And I, I ran downstairs. I'm like, what is that noise? And it was my brother. <laughs> having a seizure mm. and um, I just remember seeing him he was all blue <sighs> and he couldn't breathe and I just remember just looking at him and I ran upstairs to grab my phone and um, I called 911 and I just I remember everything I just remember like screaming at them like our address and like my brother needs help my brother needs help and they're like telling me to calm down i just kept holding my brother and i kept praying like joshua please wake up joshua joshua please and um <laughs> i tried to call my mom but she wouldn't be she wouldn't answer the phone but she never answered the phone it always drove me crazy yeah. so i called my mom's boss i'm like tell my mom to go home right now and i just kept rocking my brother because that was the scariest moment i've ever been through and uh, finally he just uh, snapped and he woke up and he was like, it was like he was trying to talk and he was like, uh, 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 and he just smiled at me big and I was like, Joshua, jo like, Joshua, what just happened? Like I was, right. and he just stopped smiling at me and he couldn't talk, but he just smiled at me and um, gosh, it just, I remember that moment and my mom running home and the ambulance came and then uh, social workers came because they're like, oh, he's not in school. I'm not, like, and it just caused oh, no. so much stuff. And, um, but after that moment, my brother went back to being, all I can say is this Tasmanian devil. I, I couldn't go to work. I, I couldn't train for wrestling anymore because of him. I would come home and he would throw everything out the window. And I felt like every week cops were at our house because oh. of him. Yeah whether if he was 
fighting my mom, threatening her, threatening the neighbors, running away. Every week the cops were at our house and I was just like, not again. And I say not again because that's what happened from legit since I was two with my brother. Right. I've always had cops at the house. I've always had social workers stop by. And I just thought, God, why again? Why is this happening again? And this is when I was really taking off, like getting a lot of extra work with WDB and, you know, trying to get signed. And here I am living my dream, you know, training to be a wrestler and I'm, I'm taking off in the indies and I couldn't take any more bookings. I couldn't train. And that's what killed me because I always told my mom, I'm always going to be here for you guys, but just give me wrestling because that's all I ask. And, um, you know, when I finally did get signed by WWE, the last day I left, I packed up all my stuff and here's the cops at my house again. And they had to take my brother to a psych ward and here I am driving off in a U-Haul saying bye to my mom, but seeing the police take my brother away. Oh my God. So. Can't even imagine what's going through your mind. Like was, you don't even get to enjoy I, the moment. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I felt so guilty. Like, who am I getting to leave my family to live my dream, you right. know? And all I can think about, is my mom gonna be okay? Is Joshua gonna be okay? Like, what's going to happen? Am I selfish? Am I selfish for taking off and moving to Florida to live my dream? Like, I had just so much guilt and, you know, just, just so many <laughs> emotions going through my mind. And I was just like, you know what? No, you have to do something for yourself once and for all. And this is something that you wanted since you were 10, so. Can you, can you see that, that it was okay to do that? Do you still feel like it was okay to do that? Like, what did your mom say during that? Did she ever encourage you? Yeah, because my mom knows how much wrestling and WWE meant to me. She knew that was my life, and she was so proud of me and so happy for me when I, I finally got that call that I'm moving. Yeah. Um, and back then, I, I felt so guilty, just so guilty because... That was just my life for 18 years, you know what I mean? That was, that was everything. And um, it's not till now that I kind of realized like, you know, everything happens for a reason because again, my brother now is amazing. Yeah. And it's because he's in like a program now and my mom had to put him in housing because she can't take care of him by himself. But right. I really think him being around, you know, other kids and having like one-on-one -on -one staff really helped him because I remember him being so depressed I didn't have friends because he couldn't go to school because right. he would always get abused. So I always remember that. I want friends, Mercedes. I want friends. I would he always, would say that. He would always say that to me. I would so, take him to the park. I would take him to the library. But he always would say, I want friends, Mercedes. So if, if there's anybody out there, which I'm sure there is, yeah. that they're going in the same situation as you, what would you suggest to them? Put them yeah. somewhere That's the earlier? hardest thing. It took me so long to even say I had a brother with disabilities because I didn't want to be that vulnerable, you know what I mean? And I feel like once I, I said in an interview that my brother has autism, I had floods of tweets mm -hmm. saying, you know, my son has it or my sister has it or my cousin has it. And that really touched me like, yeah, oh my God, you know? And for me, I always wanted to do something for the siblings because we don't get anything. We're just, the, we're like the caretaker. So I, it's, it's so hard because every child is different and every disability is different. Like you can see, you can put a room of people with autism and they're not gonna be the same. Mm. My brother is completely different than so many people. Um, so it just depends on the situation. For me, you know, it hurt me so much when my mom told me that he was in a home. I was furious. I was so angry. But for how long were you angry before you actually realized it was good for him? I would say two years. And wow, I was, that's I was a at long FCW at the time. time. At FCW, yeah. going through this. So, you know, sometimes I would even talk to my mom, like, I don't want to hear it. I can't. You're stressing me out. I need to concentrate on this. Like, I don't, I don't, don't tell me anything about Joshua. Just tell me that he's okay. But it wasn't until I got to come home and see the change yeah. and see how happy it was and how much he has learned. He can write, he can read, like, you know what I mean? Like, wow. stuff like that, that's incredible. But every situation's different, and it's also finding the right doctors, making sure he's on the right medicine. It's, it's, it's a lot of struggle, but for me, 
having faith was number one. I always prayed to God and to make sure he took care of Joshua, you know. So to you, God has been the thing you've leaned He's, on. Yes. And do you see that sometimes, because I, I, you know, I'm the same way. I'm very um, faithful and everything like that, and God has gotten me through a lot of situations. When you look back now, do you see that certain things, like it was definitely supposed to happen this way because? Everything. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like, for me, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens. What have you learned from that whole journey that you went through? <laughs> I learned how strong I am. Hmm. I learned that, you know, I can take anything. I really can take it, and I don't want to, but I can take it, and there's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, always. You know, you can be in the darkest moments, your darkest, your darkest days, but, you know, I remember how sad and how depressed I was before, and here I am now, like, as happy as I can be, living my dream. I. Sometimes when I actually get to sit back and think about, like you told me before many times, like you have to understand what you're doing in the moment. Like I've done everything that I saw out in my mind that I wanted to do. And here I am living my dream. Like sometimes I'm like, how does, how does life happen like that? But everything happens for a reason and everything happens for a reason to make you into the person you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And God put things in my calendar before I even knew were gonna happen. Right. You know, everything happens for a reason and it's 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 so it's so crazy. It's so crazy that I'm here. And I wanna definitely <laughs> touch on that yeah. and talk about that. And Let's something get the sadness out. Of no, it. it's yeah. not even that. It's not sadness. It's real, and I like yeah. that. You know, people need to learn. Uh, they they learn from that, right? And they see a different side of you. That everything isn't just all rosy no, it's never. all the time, right? People yeah. think that, um, especially if celebrities or something. They don't. They forget. It's yeah. the human. <laughs> You're exactly human. all are. Yeah, <laughs> we all go through our stuff, yeah. right? And your story reminded me of. Uh, there was a story that I heard of this little boy who had an ice cream cone and he got two scoops, right? And he went outside, he was so happy. And all of a sudden both scoop, or actually he had one scoop of ice cream. Goes outside, a kid bumps into him and it falls and he's so upset. But it was tied in with when something like that happens, God will give you tenfold, right? Exactly. We'll replay it. Sure enough, his mom was like, you know what? Let's go back in. I'm going to get you from something bigger. So he walked out with a double scoop, right? So it was more like if that wouldn't have happened to him, right. he wouldn't have had the double scoop. Is that how you feel? Like you you struggled so much that that's, in, in a sense, in a way, why you're succeeding so big, yeah. too. It's I, like, that's why I feel like I fight so hard for where I am or where I want to get or where I want to be. It's because of those struggles. You know, I don't ever want to be in that place I was before. Because I don't like being sad, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but absolutely, um, you know, God put me on this earth for a reason, and God brought in wrestling in my life for a reason, and God made my brother have autism for a reason, and you know, everything happens for a reason, and um, I can't touch more on that. That's just, yeah. You know, what would you say to kids that are being bullied? Because that is a huge is. thing, and I myself experienced that in school as well, and. My God, it hurts, and it's it's, it's stuck with me for so many years. Yeah, I'm, that's so hard for me. Like, because I've only went to elementary school. You know what I mean? I did a little bit of going to high school, and then I left. Yeah. Um, you know, but kids used to make fun of me because of my skin color, because of my hair was very curly, because of my brother, because I went to Goodwill and buy my car, bought my clothes, and it's just like looking back now. For me, it's really hard to understand what I can say to kids to make the bullying stop because is it ever? No, it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. But as long as you know what you want in your what in life and if you have a goal, like I remember <laughs> because of wrestling, I knew that I never wanted to get into drugs. I never wanted to make sure I didn't have sex when I was younger just because I had goals. My goal was wrestling. So, um, that's what I set my mind to. Like, I wanted to chase my dream, and I wasn't going to let anybody take that away from me. You can't bully me. You can say, well, I'm not going to make it, but I'm going to show you that I can. So it's more like showing the bully, like, you can say all these things, but it's not going to affect me. If you show them it's not going to affect me, then they kind of stop. Yeah. 
because they want a reaction. Right. Everyone wants a reaction. If you don't give it to them, then you win. Do you remember back in the day when there was, uh, you could make place a phone call and nobody had your caller ID? Yeah. Right? Before caller ID. Yeah. There is such a time, by the way, <laughs> people. <laughs> but I just remember like people would call the house and they would hang up, right? To, to get a reaction, Always. right? Yeah. Or they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll breathe really hard into the yeah. phone or, or they'll say something, exactly. you know, you're an idiot or something. Yeah. And it's when you give a reaction. I remember they used to call my house and used to do that. When I gave a reaction, they, they do would do it more. They were happy. They succeeded. Right. So That's finally, my yeah. mom was the one that said, hey, say this. So sure enough, they called and I picked up and they are doing the whole heavy breathing and all that. I started laughing and laughing yeah. into the phone and I was like, ha, you must have nothing to do. Exactly. And that must be you so are. important yep. that you're calling me. Thank you so much. You've made my day because I'm that important yep. that you've made this call. Honey, they never called exactly. again. They Don't never called them. again. Don't, Don't give, give it to them. them. Want, yeah. Ever, yeah. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Oh my God, you, you, you get here now. You're in NXT for a while. Yes. But what an impact you made in NXT. <laughs> Do you realize how big too, you know, I got to speak to Bailey a couple uh -huh. weeks ago on my show. Do you realize how, um, how important it was, the four horsewomen and the fact that you were there with Charlotte and Becky and Bailey, like how truly special that was? I mean, as you can say, everything happens for a reason and just... For that time, for even WWE to hire a woman like us, like, what a change. I remember I had my tryout and, you know, I would look up everything FCW so I knew about everyone. And they were still doing, you know, bikini contests. So um, I made sure once I got signed, I bought so many bikinis with <laughs> a lot of the push up because I was ready, you know? You yeah. Know, I knew I never wanted to be doing that, but I accepted it that. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. Like, I'm going to have to wrestle models. I'm going to have to do bikini contests. But WWE was always the goal. But I always wanted to do more. And uh, once, you know, we started training and this, this click started happening, and then Bailey came along, Charlotte, Becky, and Triple H gave us this platform of letting the woman just go, letting the woman just do it just like the guys. And if it wasn't for him, you know, Giving, a, giving us that push, but letting us letting him know that we can deliver. Mm -hmm. where, where would we be now? And now we're here. We're all here on Raw and we're on SmackDown. All of us have been champions now. That is incredible. Goosebumps. I ah. know. You know. How special was that when you saw Bailey win? The ah. last one, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. It, to me, she's my favorite one. Um, <laughs> we won't tell Charlotte we or won't Becky. Tell them just because... <laughs> For me, when I first went to FCW, I felt like the women were really cutthroat and would push you down the stairs to get somewhere. And I felt when once Bailey came, she made it so much fun and she made it cool to be a so-and-so mark. Yeah. Like she announced how much she loved wrestling, and I felt like I couldn't do it because people were like, "Huh, oh, she's a mark, she's a mark." I'm like, no, I love wrestling that much too. And ah, oh, I like that. She's like the first girl that to really like grab someone's hand and help each girl and I saw that I'm like I want to be like that I don't need to be cutthroat I don't need to be like uh -huh, behind her back and uh, like mm -hmm. no we can do this together and we need to empower each other together because that's how we're going to get here it takes two to tango right. I can't wrestle by myself I can't create magic by myself I need you as much as you need me and just seeing how just an incredible person she was like she inspired me to change so much who I was down in NXT because I was scared, like I was just guarding myself from the other girls and making sure that I was okay and making sure that my job was safe. But when she came, I'm like, no, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to do what I love and because of her. Yeah, and can't you see, I mean, I've, I've encountered that so much in my life where, you know, I actually made more guy friends than I did more girlfriends. Yeah, you know how women are. <laughs> because women can be so catty yeah. and it's so sad, but I think it's it's starting to turn. I it think that really the is. women are starting, it's just one of those things where it just becomes normal. Yeah. And then you realize, it's almost like women not voting, okay? Yeah. So women didn't vote for a long, long time and it was just normal. And then all of a sudden some women were like, wait, why am I not voting, mm -hmm. right? Why, why can't we vote? And then all of a sudden there's a women's revolution that turns around and we can vote, yeah? yeah? But there's this thing that comes around about being catty and cutthroat and with, I was in pageants yeah. and oh my God, it was so awful, right? And I thank God 
I never could do that. I, I never became one of really the popular girls, and that's because I would see them making fun of some people. Like, I saw yeah. them making fun of somebody, you know, uh, I don't think she didn't have autism, but she was crippled, and they made fun of her. And I tried to be a popular girl for so long, and then I saw that, and I went, wait a minute, I'm trying to be what? Exactly. Who puts down what? Why am I going to try to be a popular girl when all they're doing is making fun of a crippled person? Exactly. That to me was so ugly that I made the decision, no, you know, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I think it's, it's it was kind of like the norm, right? Yeah. And there's a whole difference now and a revolution starting where I think women are starting to see they can empower each other Absolutely. and help each other and still win. Yeah. And I think a lot of the guys have gotten that for a long time. They help each other. They, they look at us and they go, you guys are so catty. I know, always. Where's the drama? What's the tea? I don't even know about the girls. But it's uh, really beautiful to see our locker room now. Like, you've been in it now. Like, we're all getting along. We're all here helping each other. And that's what I love. I love being able to come to work and just knowing that ah, it's going to be an easy day. Because I'm not here to stab anyone in the back. And they're not there to stab in the bag no, either. No, we're just here to try to make magic and try to change, you know, the game and try to be as equal as we can to the guys. And, you know, we started off with being called superstars. We're not divas anymore, which is so cool. And yeah, uh, I remember when Stephanie made the announcement. announcement. We were all together. We were, like, all crying. You were so... I looked at your face and literally, I think out of... I think everybody was touched, but there, you you showed it the most. <laughs> I know. I feel like I, sometimes I get so much slack on the internet because I'm like, oh, she hates all the divas, all this. Uh, not no, at all. Absolutely not. I respect so many women. And it's not them that want to do the bra and panty matches. It's just no. during the time. Right. That's just the era it was. Like, if I was back in the era, I'd be doing that too. It's yeah. just where we're at right now and we're moving along with the times. But to me, like, I always wanted them to change that, that title. I always hated the butterfly title when they ever... You know, whenever they showed it, I was like, why? This looks like a toy. It's a butterfly. That doesn't mean we're athletes. Like, I just mm -hmm. didn't feel like that represented women well. And um, I always thought they could change the title. I never thought they could change a whole division and what it stood for. Yeah. Saying that we're superstars and not just divas or women superstars, just superstars, means that we're equal. Now, let's get on to equal pay. Let's yeah. get on to equal time. Like, let's keep on, like, having this movement just keep going up. And right. I was just so, I, I couldn't believe it. I yeah. just didn't think it was going to happen. A how, whole division. How powerful do you think Stephanie's been in that, too? Amazing. Amazing since day one. I mean, she would come down to NXT and to talk to us. And she would come to our shows to watch, you know, the women perform. And it's like, you're a mother of three. You're a yeah. busy busy woman but you took the time to come watch us because you're proud of us like always being around her just makes me realize like how lucky I am to have her as a boss she's incredible and all of us look up to her because she carries herself so well she's a businesswoman she's a mother and she runs this company so yeah. like the way she has her swag she has so much swag and I'm just like Wow, I wish I could be like her. She's yeah. incredible. I was just speaking to her earlier today, and I literally looked at her and I said, I don't, realize, I don't know if you realize how much you're looked up to and how much you have made such an impact yeah. for the women here, you know? Um, because it is one of those things you always see Stephanie just hold herself with such grace yes. and totally care. Absolutely. She cares to the core. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Triple H, too, I think it's it's been great for him to have three women, right? I mean, three, well, I say three women, three girls. I know, <laughs> crazy, right? They're growing up so big and so fast. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's, uh, to me, I, I'm so, it's been so wonderful to see what you guys have done. And then you also get the Iron Man match. Yeah. So many matches, my gosh. I know, so <laughs> many, but let me just talk about that because, I mean, we're going to, that's the first one that kind of then set the tone to then have a, a cage match yeah. and, like, how's, how did you even wrap your, I mean, I actually was watching Breaking Ground mm -hmm. when, you know, they, they have Triple H. If you guys haven't watched Breaking Ground, it's so good. It's <laughs> so good. Um, but Triple H tells you, and you were so emotional, and just I always am, and that's okay. It. <laughs> Don't hate it. The fans say I'm a crybaby too. Well, screw you guys. Like if you're in my my position, you would be too, because you're just so happy. Like 
for him to take the time again out of his busy, busy schedule and to pull me and Bailey aside and be like, because of how hard you work and because of this, we're giving you this. Mm -hmm. Not because we think you, you can have it, because you deserve it. Right. Because you deserve it. To be the first ever woman to main event a W Network special. What? What? A pay-per-view all around, like, just about you guys. Yeah. It's about you. And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> Again? Another one? I was like, oh my God, I get so overwhelmed with, you know, everything we do. And just, you know, from that, it just kept going and going. Like, just, they kept topping their stuff their self with giving me things and I'm just like again they're not giving you yes <laughs> thank you <laughs> sometimes it's like well they're I guess they're yeah. giving you the opportunity giving me the opportunity to they, prove that I do yes. deserve it yes and, and do you feel you deserve it yeah absolutely yeah I do and you know what's helpful is to hear your story of what you've been through mm -hmm. now unlike connecting the dots of everything the way you've grown up and everything that you've encountered to wow, I mean, how much more that meant for you. Yeah. This is a, wasn't just an, a woman or you know Iron Man match. This is wasn't just a cage match. This is you, your everything, your everything. whole road, you know, road that you've been on and your struggles. Did your brother get to watch? Yeah. 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 How was he when? Do you remember like the first match he ever saw you and how he was? Or um, he would come to my indie shows, but. I don't think he would really pay attention. That's when he was like, bad. <laughs> yeah. But now he, he he came to a couple of my NXT shows and he loves and I mean loves it when I lose. He thinks it's hilarious. Oh my god, yeah. that's so funny. Anytime he calls me or Facetime, he's like, oh, I hope Charlotte beats you. Oh, bye. And he hangs up on me. I'm like, okay, Joshua, thank you. <laughs> but it makes me happy that how happy he gets to see that when yeah. I lose. So it's it's actually funny. Um, well, he's just <laughs> picking on his sister. Yeah, he's legit picking on me. Um, but it just makes me so happy, you know, that you know he can say that he gets to see his sister wrestle and be a champion and just talk about wrestling with him because I always remember watching it with him. Yeah. I would always watch with him in my room or in his room. And um, God, it's just it's crazy. It's full circle and you know, at live events, seeing him in the front front row just cheering against me. Like I'll come out and he goes, Yay And then he loves Dana Brooke. If Dana comes out, I was like, Yeah Dana, beat her up and I'm like, <laughs> All right, Joshua But just to see that smile on his face yeah. and how it just how it just lights up makes me so happy. How about your mom? My mom, oh my gosh, what a little fan she is now. It's so funny, like every time I tell that story of her telling me the first time to <laughs> turn the TV off to now, like, oh my gosh, she texted me the other day, she's like, can I make uh, an Instagram fan site? I'm like, why? There's so many, like, s sometimes she's a little overboard, I'm like, oh, that is mom, so can you cute. give me a break with, like, oh my gosh, she's obsessed. You know obsessed. what? Let her. Oh, it's so annoying. Let her. Every day I get a text about... Did you read this article, or did you read this, or did you hear about this? I'm like, well, mom, I'm involved with it, so yes, I know. Thank you very much. <laughs> but could you imagine if she wasn't into it? I know, I can't. I'm very happy that she loves it, and she's such a huge fan, and she follows everything, everything. Because in a way, you were obsessed with wrestling, yes. all right, and you got your dream. Well, now she's obsessed with mm -hmm. it, and so she's living on her dream in a way, yeah, right? Doing really this, is. so let her. I know. I just, <laughs> Getting so many texts every day. You're just, oh, mom, I get it. <laughs> but, and, and is she, where's she living? She's in Rhode Island right now. Okay. All right. So you guys still have a, a close, where, where are you living? I live in Florida. Oh, that's right. You live, you're still <laughs> yeah. living. Now, you got married. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, oh, I guess. Yes. Okay. You know what? Yeah. I'll tell you. You're the first everyone I ever met, uh, admitted it to. I am married. I, I just hide it because our fans are so crazy sometimes, you know? No, but I think it's beautiful. Sure. <laughs> no, seriously, I think it's beautiful. I'm so happy that I'm talking about him. Um, he will? Yes. Has he wanted this out? Well, he's, he's fine with it. You know, if it's known. But I say, okay, you know about it, but it's none of your business. That's what I say to our fans. Like, sure. Well, what about the fact that we have so many of, the, of our girls that are married or they're with people and they're on Total Divas and it's part of the, you know, the whole thing and they do, people love that. Why would you think in your situation they wouldn't? Um, I don't know. I just think fans are just so crazy and like I see 
what they write to him at Twitter and like I don't like that stuff like if you're saying he's ugly or you know he shouldn't be with me because of this or that like that hurts me you know I and think it's part of the bullying thing that kind of exactly it and that's rehashes. what you don't you don't like it you don't bother with it it's just whatever you know what I mean it's not going to affect me but I just don't like that he could he like reads that every day you know what I mean? And he's such an amazing person. Does, he is an amazing person. <laughs> I can vouch for that because I have been around him now and for for a while. I, and legit, I, I love wrestling was always my dream. But if I didn't have him help me through that whole situation from NXT and FCW and everything with my brother, I I don't know how I would have lasted. I think it's so important, actually, <laughs> for you to embrace it seriously and. You can't live your life for what a fan would say. Yeah. I know you're trying to protect him. Yes. But I think he can handle it. I think so, too. I think he can handle it. <laughs> I think he can handle it. I know he can. You know what? <laughs> he's got he's got such bangs, man. He's got the score. It's so crazy when we got married and uh, a picture leaked and, like, it was trending. Sasha Banks got married and I was like, what the hell? Why? But, like, really? You guys thought you guys could have married me? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. so funny but you know what it just means it just means that people love you so much that and they, they care so much and they in their fantasy yeah they're with you yeah but it's okay Pretty. yeah I know <laughs> you gotta but you gotta live past that you yeah. gotta so I and am you gotta great. there you go woo woo breaking ah! news I know breaking news <laughs> I admitted it this is the well, first time ever <laughs> I appreciate that you feel comfortable of enough course. to get and I don't want you to worry and you know what maybe you will get bombarded right now who cares yeah let me just say something he's a beautiful beautiful person I mean really as far is. he really is yeah. he's a very caring loving I see the way he is with you he loves you so much and that is what's so important in life you have somebody to share all these moments with I, and I'm so very lucky right I'm so lucky you like, get to travel the road with him he's he has a job here too like how crazy yeah. you see how life works like yeah, for, you know? for you guys who don't know, you know, we're letting people in. He you actually like, does the, um, he does a lot of your, well, he does all your all outfits. He does a, a lot of costumes here. He's great. At the, how did he even begin in that? So he was an independent wrestler in Massachusetts too. And uh, I think at 18, he took up sewing in high school because he knew he wanted to make his own gear. So he just made his own gear. He made a couple of his friends gear. And uh, when I got the call to move down to FCW, to Florida for NXT, um, he quit his job. He came down with me. He didn't find a job, which is fine. Yeah. I wanted him to be home because it was a struggle for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I went from living with my mom knowing nothing about life. Like, I couldn't even, I didn't even know how to pay a bill. So he did all that for me. And I just said, make gear. They can see how my gear looks. All the boys need gear. I just kind of took off from there. Wow. And um, uh, two years later, they asked me if he could help out with WrestleMania. He had a trial run. He did incredible. And now he's here. And he's making he's, some great he makes so gear. many. He makes AJ Styles. He makes Triple H's gear for WrestleMania. Like, he's done it all. He made Michael Hayes' jacket for Hall of Fame. Like, helped Stephanie McMahon with her. Like, it's just so crazy to say names. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're so lucky, too. Like, I mark out for AJ Styles' gear. And I, yeah. to be creepy, I try it on before AJ Styles gets it. <laughs> That's what I do. I have a, a whole bunch of pictures of me wearing people's gear before they get to have them first because I think it's so cool. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I show sometimes people and they're like, what the? I'm like, I like it. It's cool. I think it's great. Yeah. Well, he obviously has it because some people can learn how to sew, but this guy is so. He's so creative. So to me, it's and he's so creative. Yeah, yeah it's not just sewing, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like he was probably this in a former life. Yeah, yeah. yeah he can do it all. He loves to write he wants to publish a book soon um mm. he can do art he's an amazing cook like he can do it all he's but incredible again and the thing is is you guys fit so well is mm. he your, your first love yes yeah i would pretty much say like yeah my first because you said that you had written off everything i'm I, not I, doing this i'm not no doing boyfriends this. so yeah how did you guys meet wrestling wrestling yeah because he was an independent yep. yeah, wrestler. Wow. He, went, he was wrestling at the same place I was training. And was it pretty instant? Oh, no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, when I first met him, I thought he was so ugly. We didn't really even talk until maybe like a year and a half later. Oh, wow. He just walked by and I was talking to someone else about... So I have an obsession with Asians and Korean movies. And I was talking about a Korean movie. He's like, oh my God, you like that movie? I'm like, yeah, I love that movie. And we just kind of started talking then. I'm like, 
I never met someone who liked Asian movies, Korean movies like yeah. me, and he liked them. And yeah, um, I is he thought, Asian? He looks. Yes, he he's uh, Cambodian. Cambodian, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I just remember him messaging me and like, "Hey, I'm going to go down to Boston. Do you want to go to Chinatown with me?" I was like, "Okay." I was like 19. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, sure. But at that time, I still didn't find him cute. But it was his personality that made me love him. Oh, I think he's all, I think he's adorable. <laughs> but he's so handsome to me now. Yeah, yeah, no, he is. But he, he had is. a rat tail when I first met him. I was like, ew. <laughs> yeah. How long did that rat tail last? Oh, not very long. No. Like, oh, God, no. <laughs> you, you with me? That got to go. Cut that off. <laughs> yes. I mean, I see you. When I see you guys together, I can't even imagine you with anybody else. Me either. Yeah. I love my life. Yeah, and, and you guys. Are, and what's so great is seeing you guys traveling. Like he's. Does he like to sightsee and stuff like that? He loves everything. He yeah. loves seeing everything. He's. He's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I know that sometimes you've gone on an overseas tour, and the first thing you're like, oh, he's not gonna be I there. I know. I'm like, I'm gonna miss him. Yeah. I'm gonna enjoy it, being without him. But it makes me love him so much more when I come home. Like. Baby, I missed you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So do you feel like it's good to have also a little separation from time to time? I do think so. I'm very lucky. Like, um, I see him at TVs, which is, yeah, well, it was twice a week. Um, now it's only Mondays or pay-per-views. I go home on Tuesdays. He comes home on Wednesdays. I fly on flat Friday. He leaves on uh, Sunday. I feel like I need more time, but it makes me love him more, and it makes me appreciate yeah. when that day comes when I have to hang up the boots. It's gonna be yeah. just me and him time, you know what I mean? I'll yeah. be old and just ready to relax and just be with him. I think it's so important, again, with what, everything that's going on that you have that somebody to share it with. Yeah. I don't know what I would do without my husband. You know, I, I, I can share the great, but boy do I need him there when the oh. tough is tough. Yeah. And when they're there, and that's, that's the thing that's so important. And, uh, and I encourage people, you know, to have that significant other. And if, again, if, if, if he's getting anything on Twitter or whatever, those are people that are just jealous. Exactly. Or they're, you know, they're immature. Yeah. They're just immature. Always. They don't get it. Yeah. Right? But you, I don't ever want you to hide who you are. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> exclusive. This is the breaking out party. <laughs> Because you're so <laughs> powerful and you've, you've given us, it just in this time that we've been together, girl, I am like, I'm in awe Thank of you, you even more. Thank and you. I think that the fans for sure are, um, are getting to know uh, a different Sasha than has been out there yeah. and somebody that um, will cheer for you even more because of everything that you've been through. Yeah. And what do you want to say to your fans? <sighs> Ooh, I get goosebumps because I had an autograph signing today and those always like touch me so much because I remember being that kid waiting in line seeing and wanting to meet my heroes so the fact that people wait even day like a day before just to meet me so they can be the first person in line like that's um, sometimes that doesn't really like sit in yet I'm like I'm famous like you care about me you want to meet me and you you spend money and you take time off your job or you take your kids out of school just to meet me like so crazy but my fans are um, incredible absolutely incredible and I know that I wouldn't be here without them I know I wouldn't be in my spot without them because if they didn't care I wouldn't be here um, they make me feel like I can do anything and uh, especially little girls seeing uh, little girls of different races you know mm -hmm. come and dress up like me like that touches me the most because I know growing up as a, a person with a different skin color than a lot of you know, other kids growing up, especially living in Iowa, I was like the only black kid in the it's whole funny, town. It's funny because you don't even look like... People like, think I'm Mexican sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can pull off for a lot of different races, but, you know, that was so hard for me just to know that I can be a role model for them. Like, that just what keeps me going. Like, you know, I can do a lot of different things, but knowing that I can change a child's life or help them with a the situation because I did something or said something, like, um, that's so empowering. And it I is. think it's a beautiful thing to have and know that you can have and do. Yeah, I think that that's the most important thing yeah. is to know there's always going to be haters out there. Always. You cannot let them drown out the what's good out there and what you can do and who you are yeah. and all. And that's what I tell everybody. Be yourself. Don't ever try to be someone else because yeah. you think they're Absolutely. cool. Yeah. It's never going to work. It's never going to make you happy. Never. 
Um, there is only one you. Always. Isn't that, yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's the biggest yeah, gift. There will never be anybody but just one you. So don't try to be anybody else. Exactly. I thank <laughs> you so much. Seriously, I what's what's the biggest thing now? What's your next goal? <sighs> just there's so many little things, but the biggest thing is to uh, main event at WrestleMania. Ah! With <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> so funny because when I asked that to Bailey, she said WrestleMania headline. She wants it to be you and, and Charlotte and Becky and do a four way. I mean, that's their dreams too, so I'll let them have it. But I would love to have it with just Bailey because she's great. But um, we had a fatal four way, and I think that's really what took us off into that next step. And fans were going crazy about it. So we can pull it off again. I can see that happening. I can see that happening. We'll see if it happens. If it, if it doesn't happen in this one. I'm sure in the future yeah. it's it's definitely there. It's in the cards. Absolutely. Congratulations to you because you represent women so well. You're representing the little girl inside of you that went through so much. Yeah. You've actually let her out and let her play yeah. and succumb through all of that, right? Yeah. And uh, and not a lot of people do that. No. So you're very courageous. <laughs> and, um, I love you ah, dearly, you. I dearly. Love you. I can't believe I shared so many uh, emotional stories, but hopefully it does help someone because um, it's not easy for me. It's definitely not easy for me to be vulnerable because people see me as this character larger than life, but like you said, we are real people and we have real stories. And yeah. anything to help the next person, you know, always give a helping hand. I think that's so beautiful. Thank you. Especially in this world today. Yeah, well, I think One that they're, they're still gonna see you that way. <laughs> of course. But now they're gonna Hopefully. appreciate you even yeah. more because of the struggle you've went through. So, thanks again. Thank you. Well, there you go, guys. That was uh, another episode of Making Their Way to the Ring. Um, Wow, please tell everybody about this. Spread the word. It's incredible what's being shared here. And I thank you guys for tuning in. I thank you for all the comments and for the ratings of five stars. Yes. <laughs> Remember, you can catch us on youtube.com slash TV or on iTunes. And make sure, again, that you subscribe. Uh, until then, much peace, love, and passion. Love you guys. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, Kevin Undergaro, Lillian Garcia, Mark Donica, associate producer James Frank, AfterBuzz Wrestling News correspondent Christy Olson, and the entire Making Their Way to the Ring staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook, rate and comment on iTunes and YouTube. Follow Lillian on Twitter and Instagram at Lillian Garcia. This has been a presentation of the AfterBuzz TV Network. Buzz you later.